and he moved to California and I stayed in Michigan and I was living with my mom and it was the most difficult time of my life and I was working um, a part-time job roughly 30 hours a week and I was a single mom it was something new to me and I didn't know what to do hey everybody welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in today's video or today's topic is a really I don't know hopefully you find it kind of interesting but I get questions asked all the time about my life and like kind of what I've been through and just like just in general kind of like to what got me to the point of what you guys kind of see me as today and I just thought I'd make a little video or like a short video on here to just kind of like let you guys know you know everything about my life and just kind of like share these things that I've never really openly shared and I hope that I don't really cross the line here because I mean I do try my best to you know keep my personal life personal but I felt like it's okay for me to kind of share these things and embrace these things with you guys because it might help you realize that you know life is not always perfect success doesn't always come first and so on and so forth so before I get into this I'd really love your support and if you haven't subscribed to my channel you guys can go ahead and do so and I would really 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 appreciate it if you also followed me on my socials on my Instagram on my TikTok and of course on my YouTube channel because I'm really trying to grow my YouTube channel so I'd really 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 love your support um, so yeah, I'm gonna kind of dive deep into my childhood, my my um, early 20s, late 20s, and right now in my early 30s and just kind of take things, take you guys with me along the way. So without further ado, let's just get started. So first things first, I was born into a Lebanese Muslim family in Dearborn, Michigan. I have two very amazing parents um, that work very hard on raising um, me and my siblings. We are five girls and one boy, and um, my parents worked really hard to raise us Islamically, alhamdulillah. We went to Arabic schools, we went to Sunday schools, we went to Islamic schools, and um, my parents really wanted to kind of grasp the roots of Islam in us and the roots of our our country in us and our heritage in us and they worked really hard on doing that I mean there was times where growing up you know my dad would tell us like don't speak English at home make sure that you're speaking Arabic and the reason why is to kind of just embrace our language and teach us how to speak Arabic and right now that I'm older I'm very grateful to say that like alhamdulillah like I could speak Arabic fluently I can read it fluently I can read Quran I can read dua I can make my prayers and that's all with the grace of my parents so shout out to my parents because they're so dope um, and um, I'm doing that for my kids as well. I graduated high school in 2007 um, with a 3.7 GPA and um, I was on the National Honor Society. I was always like a good kid, you know, I was always a good kid and I always like listened to my parents. I did what they wanted me to do, which leads me on to my next point of going to study, you know, pre-med in University of Michigan Dearborn. I went to a, uh, a small community college and after two years I went to U of M and I studied for around two to three years. I studied you know, biology, chemistry, physics, math, you name it. I was doing all of that. I was doing great until my last semester. Um, I was taking, um, I think, Orgo and I was taking uh, uh, genetics and I wasn't really doing that great. And I failed, you know, I'm gonna be very honest with you. I think I got like a D. I'm not the type of person that gets these. If you know me, if you're, if you're somebody from high school and you know me, like I'm all about good grades. I'm all about doing my best and all that type of stuff. And when I realized I was doing my best there and it wasn't coming through, I was like, oh my goodness. Well, maybe this just isn't for me. And the reason why I kind of went into doing pre-med was because my dad, he really wanted to be a doctor when he was younger, but then his dad got sick and he had to take care of his father. And then he got married and then he just had this responsibility and he was like, okay, I couldn't be a doctor so I want my daughter to be a doctor. And if you're Arab or you're from like um, the Pakistani or Indian community, you know very much about our parents and how they really want us to be very successful. And I think it's because they came here without the opportunity to go to college and they just want that for their children. And I admired that and I loved that and I really tried my best but it didn't work. After that period of time, my parents split up, they got a divorce. And after their divorce um, in 2009, I got engaged to the father of my kids. 
right yeah, right now and we were engaged for around two to three years we got married in 2012 11 and i had my son in 2012 hassan the joy of my life the the apple of my eye <laughs> um and um i was still continuing my 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 studies i transferred from university of michigan dearborn to wayne state university where i acquired a bachelor's a degree in business administration and i majored in accounting i did very well i did very 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 well i felt like i was all about that type of lifestyle business accounting math numbers problem solving things like that i felt like i it really it really was something that I liked and I did very, very, very well, alhamdulillah. And I got scholarships and it was like a good time for me. I was shining, you know, I was shining in those years, alhamdulillah. At that time, um, I didn't know that I was entrepreneurial. I just was trying to have businesses. Before I had my first son, my first child, I started a business which was selling headbands. Um, and back in the day, I'm telling you, this was like in 2010. This was like before I got married. Um, I was engaged at the time and I really wanted to sell um, um, at the time. It was so stylish There was these colored headbands with these big 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 flowers and you just you know Everybody was wearing them to weddings and their little girls were wearing them and I decided to go purchase some from Alibaba and sell them Back at that time YouTube wasn't a thing Facebook was just rising e-commerce Amazon all that type of stuff all of those platforms that weren't really a thing people were still shopping in stores and I didn't know where, where to sell them and my dad had a smoke shop and I sold them there and um, it took a very, very, very long time. And everybody was telling me, what are you, what are you doing? Yeah, this is not a good idea. Don't, don't do this. You know, just focus on your studies. At the time, you know, I wasn't working and I didn't have an income and I was just a student. And I was very, very young. I was like 18, 19, 20. And um, I just was like, you know what? Well, maybe this just isn't for me like right now. So I took a break, went to school, got married, um, graduated and moved to California in 2014. I had my daughter when we were here. And when I had my daughter here in California, uh, it kind of made me very depressed. I was, I was in a very, very depressed time in my life. And I just didn't know what I was doing. I felt helpless. I felt hopeless. I felt like, I felt like a failure, even though I shouldn't have felt that way. You know, I just felt like a failure. My, my marriage wasn't the greatest. I ended up moving back to Michigan because I really missed my family. And I just had this mindset where... I wanted to be a mother, which is absolutely okay. I wanted to be a mother. I wanted to be a housewife. I wanted to take care of the kids. I wanted to raise them Islamically. And I wanted to make sure that my children, you know, went to school. They had good grades. And I really, really, really focused on that. And um, my son went to school. It was his first year of kindergarten, preschool, kindergarten. And my daughter was like around six months at the time. And I felt like I wanted to dress her up and I wanted to doll her up and I wanted her to look so cute and so nice. And what I did was I opened up a boutique and it was called Allure Baby Boutique. And I bought tons and tons and tons of stuff from China, I'm talking like Omar, oh, like three, four thousand dollars worth of stuff. And I got them and I started my own website. My brother was really into graphic design and my brother helped me set up this whole website, which looked not so bad, I guess you could say. And this was in the year 2015, 2016. And, um, I tried and tried and tried and I relied on my community for, for support, for orders and things like that and I didn't get it. I shut down the website. I obviously couldn't afford to make payments on the site. I was somebody that relied on her spouse for income, for support and at that point it was just getting too costly and he was just like, you know, like this is just not something that I think you should be pursuing. And I ended it and it just didn't work out and I was just like, okay, you know what? This business just didn't work out for me. It's just not something that I think... It's a thing, you know, it's just not something that is a thing for me, maybe. So I just ended it. But in my heart, I was business savvy. I wanted I wanted it. The drive existed. I tried, you know, you know, like execution is respected. I always say this, you know, and I executed something, even though it didn't work. And and I, I, and I, I know people don't like to say the word failure, like rather it's a lesson, but like it didn't work out. Right. And but it was a lesson for me. You know, that was the second business that didn't work out for me, but it didn't stop me from keep on trying because it existed within me. Like being an entrepreneur is like in my blood. I can't explain it more than this. A couple years later, two years later, um, 2018, in the summer of 2018, um, me and my husband at the time divorced and he moved to California and I stayed in Michigan and I was living with my mom. And it was the most difficult time of my life. And I was working um, a part-time job, roughly 30 hours a week and I was a single mom. It was something new to me. And I didn't know what to do. 
and I didn't know what to do. I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't know what to do, but I knew that I needed to do something. I knew that I had to do everything in my power to make sure that it worked and that I was successful and that I didn't want to rely on anybody for an income. Not my parents, not my, not nobody, not a man, not anybody, because I didn't want to fall in that trap where I depended on somebody for an income. You get divorced and then you're like at square one with nothing and no money in your bank account. And even though I had an education, um, I wasn't working, you know, so it really didn't make a difference in my life because the income was either very limited or the income was just not substantial enough for me to survive on my own. And um, I lived with my mom for a whole year. My mom took me in. My sister, who wasn't married at the time, was living with us and my brother. It was so nice, you know, ironically, as sad as it was, it was so nice because my mom was my biggest supporter. My mom would babysit when I had to go work out or when I had to go to Tim Hortons to work at night and start my other businesses and, and just hustle my way through, right? Hustle every every single day, all day, every day. Um, and my schedule was pretty much like this for a whole year. You know, wake up early in the morning on the weekdays, get my kids ready to school, drop off my daughter at her preschool, drop off my son at his school because they were separate schools, and then go to work from like 9 to 3, come back, pick up my son, come back, pick up my daughter, feed my kids, sit down, do homework, and then put them to bed, and then I would start hustling from like 7 to eight, seven or 8 p.m. to like 12, 1, 2 a.m. I met with people, I connected with amazing individuals that I'm still talking with today that really helped shape and mold the future of what you see now. And um, I just hustled every night, every night, every night, every night, and the days got easier, not easier, but got better and hopeful. And I started to see change. I started to make money. I started uh, side hustles and I would follow Gary V and I would try this and I would try that. And there was nothing I didn't try because I think I just reached a point where I was so desperate to where I really needed to do something, period. Failure was not an option. I just hustled and hustled and hustled and hustled and hustled until I finally, you know, started my blog and my blog started actually as a page to kind of inspire and support um, people and motivate women and I never brought up divorce. I just just talked about motivation and it just I would share some photos of fashion or photos of my outfits, right? And it just sparked. My blog just sparked, you know? And I've always had a sense of fashion and I've always had a sense of wanting to just cute and buy nice clothes and da 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 da. And um, it just happened, you know, organically, subhanAllah, and it just worked out in my favor. Maybe it's like Allah's way of doing it. And I remember re reaching a point where it was overwhelming. You know, my videos were getting a lot of views. I was growing rapidly and I was like, you know, there weren't that many people at the time. There were, of course, like very large influencers that you know today, but there weren't really like that many like little influencers trying to like get up there. And um, I remember making a turaqa prayer, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like, Ya Allah, if this is going to take me away from you, take it away from me. Take it away from me. And if it's going to somehow help me change people's lives and bring me closer to you, keep it for me. You know, and I cannot stress this enough. And I remember this was something that I'd done early in my early days of blogging. And I still, still say the same thing today. You know, like, you know, my platform is something that like I take very seriously and I have a very, very, very big social responsibility. And I, and I want to make sure that I impact somebody, right? And that's something that I work on every single day. Like, that's the end goal. Um, but just going back to, you know, after a year, what happened? I started my blog, started um, Zahra Bero blog. And at the same time, that wasn't making me money. You know, I was starting getting PR packages from people, sending me hijabs, sending me dresses, yada, yada, yada. I was too shy to ask for payment. And then I reached a point where it was like, hey, you know what? Mm, you should ask for some money. And I was asking for like really low amounts, like $20, $40. And brands would pay me and I was like, wait, like it takes me like a whole day to get this after taxes. And I'm making this in like 30 minutes. Wait, I love this idea. I love this concept. How can I double this? How can I triple this? And then it reached a point where it was like, okay, Zahra, well, you're still at less than 10K followers and brands really are recognizing numbers right now. How can you make money? At that time, simultaneously while starting my blog, which is probably something you've never known about me was... I started a dropshipping business, um, which was dropshipping items from China. I had a website with items that I picked from China, which, which, which was for women's clothing. It was like really cute fashion clothes, like sweaters, skirts, tank tops, etc. 
and I would put these on my site, run ads, get people to purchase stuff from my site, and then go ahead and just drop ship these items from like a supplier in China, and then they would send them the items to their house. So I was like, this is an amazing way to make money, da 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 da. And you know, it made me not money, but like I broke even. And I was like, okay, you know what? I don't have money to be playing around like this. Like if it's not making me money, maybe it's just not meant for me. And it was like after like two to three months, I was like, you know what? Like Alhamdulillah, I was getting sales, but it wasn't like enough to kind of cover the cost of ads because I didn't really have a niche. I didn't really have anybody. I was building something from scratch. That didn't end up working out. But part of me working for that business was me creating an Instagram page for my business, which was called The Fashion Collection. Um, and uh, The Fashion Collection had unique items from China or just in general, unique items for women that um, were, like I, as I was saying, like mini skirts, jeans, ripped jeans, sweaters, da 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 da. And I remember creating that page on Instagram and I was using inspirational images to kind of get people to like or comment. And I came across this really, really, really cute post on Pinterest and I was like, man, I wish I could have this for hijabi girls. I really, really, really wish that I can make this for a hijabi. I wish I could wear this. Like, how can I wear this? Because this item just didn't exist. It wasn't there. And it, I remember it, it was a, um, it was a skirt, uh, which was a, uh, which was made of, of, of like a corduroy fabric, and it was, it would, and it had like these thick buttons on the side. And I was like, man, this is so chic. Like, it's such a cute fall item with some like knee high boots. I went on the internet that day and I said, you know what? How can, how can I make this? How can I make this? And I went online and I, the, the specific um, print or style that I was looking for um, was very, very, very expensive. And I remember like doing the cost and I had car payments and I had payments for this and I had payments for that. I was like, okay, I can't afford this. Oh my goodness, I can't afford it. And then I remember calling my seamstress. I'm like, hey, if I want to do something like this, how much would it cost? I added the numbers together. I'm like, you know what? Maybe this is not gonna work out now maybe this is just not something that I can do now but this is something that I want to do for sure and I put that thought to the side I kept it in my head somewhere and I knew that I was gonna revisit it when I had the opportunity and what I did was I because I had this business mindset where I knew how to buy and sell or I knew how to like drive somebody to come purchase something I already knew that I I already knew that I could do that and I had a, a competitive advantage um, to showcase um, modeling packages for brands and that's what got me into modeling and what I would do when I started my modeling career I don't even want to say as a career I was just like an amateur I, I, well, I'm not a model I'm not a professional model but I wanted to find a way to make money and what I did was I created a package sheet that was so professional so nicely done I bought a template I made it look so nice and I pitched myself to brands and I said, you know what? This brand needs work. I don't like these photos. Like, you know, we, I, could, I could fix them. I could make them better. So I would look at ASOS, Boohoo, da 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 da. And I was like, you know what? This is what they have and this is what they're doing. Let's do the same thing. And here's how much I'm gonna charge you. And I remember my first gig, I made like 200 bucks and it didn't take me an hour and I was flying. When I tell you I was flying, I was flying. I was so happy because it took me like four days to make that. And here I am doing it in one or two hours. I love that idea. I was like, dang it, Zahra. You've got it. You've got what it takes. Kill it. Started scaling my way up. Started scaling my way up. And I worked that for a good year and a half. And that's how I built my social media profile. That's how I built my Instagram was kind of being the face of many brands and um, I got people to recognize me and I started making money and eventually it led me to a point where I made enough money to start my own business and that's how Zahra the label became Zahra the label and it was you know because I went through everything that I went through the tough times the depressing times the, the, the postpartum depression the depression of, 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 of going through a divorce, um, the depression of people victimizing you in the community as a divorced woman, um, the sadness of a business failing, the lessons that you have to learn the hard way, right? All of these things shape and define and mold me. They mold my life. They mold everything about me, right? And I just want you to know that 
Your struggles, they define you. They help you. They're what's going to push you to be where you want to be in life. Whatever it is that you want to be. Your struggles, if they don't exist, you can't reach success. You, you, you can't be something if you don't go through nothing, you know? You have to go through the worst sometimes. You have to go through difficult trials. Sometimes Allah tests you. Sometimes, you know, like, they're difficult tests. And, 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 and you don't know what to do, you know? So the reason why I'm sharing my story is not for me to just share my story or just for you to get to know me better, but there's a message behind this YouTube video. And it's a very simple message, and you probably hear this often, but you just heard my struggles. You just heard what I went through. You just heard it how many times I failed in my life, you know? And those struggles and those failures and those difficult trials that I faced, those, the, the crying nights, the sleepless nights, the losing money, all of that defines Zahra Barrow. And all of that defines Zahra the label. And it, if I didn't go through that, these won't be here now. And alhamdulillah, like I'm so grateful to say that my difficulties, I now embrace. Maybe when I was going through them, I didn't understand them. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, I'm, I love to be open and honest with you guys, you know. Going through them, sometimes I would question. Like, I wouldn't question Allah. I, w I wouldn't question what I was going through. But I would question and say, man, like, y'all, man, like, like, why is this happening? Did I do something wrong? Was it me? Is this my fault? You know, I, I would always feel like, was this the reason? Am I the reason? Did I do something? Did I sin? D did, did me sinning cause this to happen? And I'm like, you know what? Allah, if He loves you, He's going to put you through trials. And I said, you know what? Allah loves me. <laughs> and Allah put me through these trials, right? And maybe my trials are nothing like your trials. You know, maybe my trials are nothing like anybody else's trials. But they're still trials. And Allah puts a test in your life. And Allah pushes you to how much He knows you can handle, right? Like Allah knows how much you can handle. And He gives you your bala or your, or your difficulty based on how much you can handle. Everybody can handle different things. That's why some people have it worse than others. Because some people can bear it more than others, right? And Allah creates the strength within you to move forward. Allah gives you the patience and the time to heal. And I just want to let you know that better days come. Better days came for me. I am at a very, very, very happy point in my life. And I never thought in a million, 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 million years that I could be where I'm standing today. That I could be an independent woman. That I can have a successful business. That I can teach women, talk to women, share my story, talk in front of a camera, and be very confident, you know? And just display it, um, display it and be honest with myself and be honest with you guys. I never thought I could have it. I never thought I could build a platform. I never thought I could even have a YouTube channel. I, w I, I was afraid of stage fright. I was very shy as a kid. But you know what? I learned so much by going through all of these difficult things in my life. And I really hope that you take this video and you kind of take it and realize that not everything you see, not all the success that you see on my, on my posts or on my stories or on my page came from nothing. They came from everything I just talked to you about. And I want you to know that better days are coming. And I want you to know that you can do it. Okay, look at me. You can do this. And just, you know, focus on your on your life and focus on exactly what it is that you want to do. And just don't be surrounded by any negativity. Just stay super focused and like legit just stay in your lane. Stay focused, laser focused. That's what I did. That's what you can do. And I know that you can do it. So do it. And better days are coming. And I know that... Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the best of plans for us so just trust in him do tawakkul and make dua so that brings us to the end of my video thank you so much for watching this till the end if you did I know I said it was going to be a short one but it's obviously a really long one but I really hope that you enjoyed it let me know what you thought of this video like I want to know do you guys like care about my life do you guys want me to share more um, kind of stories in depth um, what do you guys want me to share? Um, I would love it for you to comment down below. If you haven't subscribed, I see you. Please subscribe. I would really love your support. It really helps me as a creator. And it really motivates me to just keep on working more and keep sharing more about my life and about whatever it is that you want me to do. I love you guys so much. Take care. All the love. And we'll talk soon.